Great. So in this section, I'm going to look out for preparation and presentation of financial statement, the question solving stage. Yes. Kindly subscribe if I've not done that. And don't forget to share the link with your friends. Okay. Now, before I start with the with the financial statement preparation, there are some basic uh, principle that we need to add how to in solving any exam question, especially operational financial statement. We had a question solving stage. Good. In a previous meeting, we look at the structure and how to prepare the financial statement and some few issues. Today, I'm going to pick a full question to back that, like what we did last meeting. Now, before we start any question, follow this approach, yes? Follow my approach and you'll be fine. What's the approach? The approach is called RAT or RAF. Either RAT or RAF. So follow that approach carefully. Before you solve any question on this edge, can we follow this principle and you are safe? It does mean try and test it. So, yes, let me walk you through. The armies read the requirement first, the requirement. So, the requirement first. Why do you have to read the requirement? You have to read the requirement for two basic issues. One, to avoid deviation. Some people, they are allergic to some question. Me, this question, I will never answer it. Probably the questions are seven. You have to answer five. So you know that some of two questions are not going to tackle them. Fine. Go straight to the requirement so that you will read the entire scenario before you realize is the question that mm, no answer it. Don't waste your time. Good. Important number two. As soon as you read the requirements, all the cells, but the nervous system and then the cells within your body respond to the question and start providing you with solution. And it moves into the brain and you start to remember how to solve it. So for instance, you are there asked you to determine the borrowing cost need to be capitalized immediately. Okay, I need my capitalization rate. I need a loan amount. That is all. But if you don't read the requirement and you see that a trial balance there, the mere trial balance does not mean it's the of financial statement. They can also trick you. If you see financial statement there, it does not necessarily mean it's a cash flow. It can also be for ratios. It can also be for console. So the mere fact you see financial statement there, just goes through to the requirement. So if you have realized all questions that I solve with you, I read a requirement first. Why? To just stimulate myself towards the question. Then, back from the requirement, you read what you call the footnotes or the additional information. The footnotes or the additional information. This is very important. So this is additional information given to you. Normally we call it the footnote. Yeah, I'm saying you read it two times. Yes, because when I was developing this principle some years back, we encountered some challenge and that made us include those two conditions. Now, I'm saying that read the footnote two times. The very first one, read it fast. You are going to identify only two issues. When you're reading the footnote, be fast. And you're going to identify only two issues. Number one, the affected areas. Oh, to affect two items. Oh, cost of sales 
and then it also affects MBB shadow. Okay, so just writing small, small against it and be fast. The first time reading, that's not the time you're going to stop it, please. You are just reading to identify the areas that will affect. That is all. Then, second time, that one, you are actually solving it. The second reading, you are actually what? solving it. Good. And here, I put a strong warning in the principle. In fact, I will upload the entire principle to you very soon. Now, the warning is that no figure should enter your solution sheet or your answer booklet unless you have what satisfy yourself with all the footnotes. Because the figure that probably it all is free, it cannot be free. There's a footnote affecting it. So if you don't read all the footnotes, and after reading one or two, oh, this figure here is free. No, please don't do that. Before you make a conclusion, this figure is free, go through on the footnote first. You are done. Then you go to T. The T is for trial balance. Trial balance. Trial what? Balance. And then F is financial statement. So it will give you financial statement or a trial balance. Financial statement. Now, this one you are going to scan through for two items, just for scanning purposes. You are scanning through for two issues. First, you are scanning through for usual and unusual item. So, to scan through the trial balance or the financial statement given to you for just two items, usual and what unusual item. That is all. Now, usual item. Usual item that, in fact, you are aware of it, like sales revenue, like cost of sales. That one, you know where you're going to trade it. Those one, move on. Then you go to, there are some items that will be unusual. They are unusual. Unusual means that's your first time seeing this item in the trial balance. Unusual. Your first time seeing this particular item in a trial balance. What do you do? Yes, yeah, so they use maximum of 30 seconds. Half a minute. 30 seconds to make a decision. Whether to be. Then you check. If that item is a debit side, don't worry. Then if that item is not an expense, then it's a what? Asset. That is all. If it's not an expense, it's an asset. If that item is a credit side, then if it's no revenue, it will be income or liability. So take note of that. Now, I have another principle. That one, I'll not explain it, but I'll just quote it. That was the second principle. This was the first principle, and that was the second principle. It says that one known is not equal to one unknown, but five known is equal to what? One unknown, yes. I will explain that one later. Meaning that you have to solve more questions, five solved questions. If you're able to solve at least five questions, I to help you clear the unusual items out of your way. And then you go ahead to so your question. So I am done with the wrap or the rough approach. Right after scanning through, now you start work. Now when you start work, you already you scan the question and that question at the back of your mind. So something like oversight will not be too common with you because you scan through all that is all. So I'm going to use this approach to solve this particular question. So let's start. Three questions. So first, I will straight to the comment. 
The first statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for Binkabi Limited for the year and 30th September 2017. B. Prepare a statement of financial position of Binkabi Limited at 30th September 2017. Good. 20 months. Now, right after the requirement, you have to set the tone for the solution. Good. Right after the requirement, I'm going to set the tone. If this question is a question that, yes, I have to answer, it's a must, then let me do something. Go. Right after the requirement, set the tone. How do you set the tone? Let's do something here. Set the tone. How do you set the tone for the solution? Let's do something here. Can you demarcate your solution page? Demarcate your solution page like this. So tell us, maybe your first page is your profit and loss. Your second page is the financial position. Then from third page going is your workings or your notes. Or maybe the financial position sometimes consumes more than a page. So now you can demarcate what two pages. So it means that your page one, profit and loss, Page two and three, they are what? They are your financial position. Then page four becomes your workings. Clearly says this. So, especially if you're using paper base. Okay. So, I want to show the tone for the solution. So, first, the name of the company, the three protocols. I have to adhere myself to the three protocols. Please and please again, this is how you must answer the question and the exam condition. I repeat the exam script. Okay. So the name of the company is what? Binkabi. Binkabi. Okay, so let's put it down. So first, I write here Binkabi, the name of the company. Binkabi Limited. Have you seen? Binkabi Limited. Then I tell examiner statement of what? Profits or loss and other comprehensive income. Comprehensive income for the year ended. For the year ended. For the year ended. Thirtieth what? September. Twenty seventeen eh? or twenty eighteen. Let's go and check the question. As September 2017, fine. Okay, so that is it. So that is the, the three protocols. You certify one. Now let's go and pick the, the currency, the reporting currency quickly. So the reporting currency will be reporting currency is Ghanaian cities in thousands. So the same thing now right here, Ghanaian cities in thousands, like this. Then I'll pause, go to the next page and write again, Binga be limited. Now I'm the B, is the requirement A. I agree. Okay. Now, what happened is this. I come here and then I write, so the name of the company, Bunkabi Limited. Okay. 
Bicabin Limited. On the next page, you become limited. Then statement of what? Statement of financial position. Financial position. Good financial position. Financial position as at 30 September. 2017. And line that one also, I write the reporting currency. And answer this like this. Now, if you should end here for now, you will not publish score zero. Yeah. If you should end here for now, at least three up to six six should be yours. You got this? Qualify for a tick. Qualify for a tick plus the other ones too. So it tells you that these ones are very important. It's just the name, the heading, and the reporting currency. That is all. So this is how you will set the tone for the requirements. Even if they are 10 up to 4 requirements, you have to continue in that order. Okay. So take notes. Of this, I hope you can see the board clear. Okay. Then we are done with the hour, so the requirements. They go to the footnotes. This time run, we are just. But before we go to the footnotes, there is something that you need to know. Check the year very well. This year is what 30th of September, 2017. Now, September 2017, that means the year will start from where? If our body year ends at 30th September 2017, what will be the beginning period? The beginning date should be the next day, right? That will be 1st of October 2017. 16, right? Okay, so the next day of the previous year. Fine. So, can you make sure that these dates are with you so that anytime there is another quote, any additional dates, we will now refer and then compare. Okay, so let's take notes of that. Okay, so let's continue the game. Let's go to the other information. You are going to read. Can you take note of the item? I read it two times. First, very fast. When we, go, when we start the actual game, read it again. Now, just tell us the effect. And if possible, tell us. A little treatment that you can remember. Now, the ability limited revenue includes 60 million for who sold to coffee on October 2016. October 2016. When is October? And in October is when? October is the beginning of this financial year. That's good news. Confidently. Fine. We want it. Okay. On still or return basis, still or return basis. This is IFRS 15, basically. Now, this is a type of still that you dispose the goods to the past. Normally, it's agent. Normally, it's by agent. For instance, this is the company. Uh, a manufacturing company here, the company A, manufacturing company. Now, he disposed some goods to a wholesale company or retail company, maybe company B, retail company, company B. And inform you that these goods that I'm selling to you, 
you have maybe I'm selling goods costing fifty dollars, fifty thousand dollars to you. You have three months. At the end of the three months, if I don't hear from you, I will deem this as what still. But you have up to three months to return the entire goods to us if you don't want. So we have dispatched some goods to you on a condition that, for an assumption that within three months, if we don't hear from you, we are going to consider that as a well, sales, basically. But if that three months is not over, if that three months is not over, then it means that we cannot tell ourselves that we've made a sale. So let's take note. Within that three month period, there's no word sale. And that's the meaning of what sale. On return basis or still or return basis. That is it. So on still or return basis. So as the name suggests, so still or return. Return word basis. So two conditions. There's a deadline. If you don't return the goods within that deadline, we deem the goods or we deem as what sales. So take note of that. Uh -huh. So basically, now let's see something in this question. So in this question, so as of September, as of September, September 2017, records indicate that Kofi had sold 40% of the goose. The goods were involved to coffee at twelve percent margin. Here, the assumption is that if coffee have made a sale of, or we have dispatched goods to coffee sixteen million, then it means that if coffee are able to sell forty percent, the level what sixty percent, then that sixty percent is not sale. Coffee have not made a sale yet. Because public office are our, our agents or the main distributor. Covid our main distributor or our agents. So therefore, the 60% of this should be reversed. And however, they have to give us the profit margin so that we can calculate the profit and or we can calculate the cost of it. So tell us that this note in short, the proportion of the sales, which are not been passed on yet or not been sold yet, or the proportion of the goods which are still with coffee, they are not all sale. So therefore, it must be reversed. How do you reverse it? First, the cash is is what 16 million. So it takes 60%, you got 40% or so. So in, in some way. Note one, all that we do is it will affect sales revenue. So write sales revenue small against it in the bracket. We need to less 60% of what 16 million from your sales revenue. As a first work is that you have to do. Again, the same figure. This is the sales aspect, the sales value. The sales value needs to be eliminated. How? To entry. Just pick your calculator. Take the proportion, which are still within inventory. That one's not sale. And then times the 60% times the 60 million. Again, go to your receivable because we part of receivables. Take it off from where? Receivables. So go to your trade receivables and take it from the second. The second. Now, second, third examiner. This is A. Uh, this is, let me make here B. A, this is one. This is two. This is two. 
Then eliminate the cost of sales. The cost of sales. The cost. Eliminate or the cost. So eliminate the cost. The cost. So the cost of the goods from where? Cost of sales. So cost of the goods. Cost of the goods should be eliminated because they've added to it the cost of sales. So uh, let me do something here. But I want to make it break it down. So anytime something like this happen, the cost of the goods. So cost of the goods. Eliminate the cost of the goods or reverse it. That is all. So here you are investing two items, the sales value and the cost. So the, no matter what the examiner should give you, the sales value and something that will help you to find the cost, you are done. How do you do that? A, subtract the cost from the cost of sales. Subtract from where? Cost of sales. Tell the examiner that the cost of sales should be reduced by this because it's not a sale. Mm, it's not a sale. This is not what a sale because the goods are still there. B, if this is not a sale, they have what? They have added these goods. In fact, among the sales, so we have to add it back to the cost of sales. So we add it back to the closing inventory. So add to the closing inventory. That is all. I'm done with the notes one. You are done. If you do the eight mile balance, please, any figure that you, you treat, eh, kindly trace the other entry. Don't do one entry and leave it. And then, uh, and expect a balancing figure. No. So in summary, you less it from trade receivable. So less it, you are lessening it because, because they have accounted for it as sale. They have included it in their receivable as if Kofi is owing them that value. But Kofi actually don't owe them because they have not made any sale. So if they have added to the trade receivable, no, uh, it's not true, then let's take it off. That's why I'm taking from the two receivable. We are now. Let's go to the two in that order. So here, in some condition, you just have to somehow go to down here, small against it, or just write cost of sales, sales, trade receivable, and inventory. That is all. Then let's do something. No two. The administrative expenses include an equity dividend of 12 million paid during the year. This is a typical error. It's a typical word, mistake. Equity dividend or ordinary dividend, financial dividend, they are not an operating expenses. They are not admin, admin expenses. They are what? Equity item or they are statutory expenses or they are equity expenses, which will be which should be reflected in where the changes in equity. So this is an error. So what do you do? Two entry. Let's go to the board. Mistakenly, they have added dividend to admin expenses. That's not true. Dividend goes to changes in equity or it goes to retain earnings. Dividends should be captured in where retain earnings, not admin expenses. So this is a typical error. So what do you do? Error. We said there are only two issues. When we go to the second note, note two, yeah. write something small, 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 small against it. So note two means uh, subtract it from admin expenses. So subtract from where admin. That's A. And do the writing. This is a reverser. We are reversing it and now add it to no, no subtract it from 
Retain earnings. That is all. We are done. We subtract from retain earnings. So this is how we will work it out. So take note of that. Great. So that's the end of the two. So in fact, as you are reading, it's just writing something small. I mean, I retain earnings against the notes. I get it. Uh huh. You have to move fast. This is not that I'm going to solve it too. I mean, I'm not solving it too. I'm just stating where it must be. Where, 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 where. That is all. Now, note three. The number ten loan notes. Now, the number ten loan notes was issued on first April 2015. First April 2015. The repayment of the loan is due in three years' time. Is due in three years' time. So let's go and visit the loan notes. 10% loan note 2020. Mm. So they have to pay 2020. Now, this question was set in 2018. So, like that. Now, 10% loan note. This contains the inherent trick. The trick is that can we find 10% on this value? Find 10% on the 18,440 and see whether they paid this interest. Every year the interest should be what? It must be 1,844. You check and see whether it has been accounted for. If you check, if you see the interest paid, wow. It's only paid what? 1,000. So probably you are owing 844. Don't forget to accrue it. So no two, no three, that is it's about interest owing. Interest owing. Which is what? Into bracket accrua. The two entry. And I hope you've gone through the beginning video or the beginner video to take note about accruals and then repayment. Good. Even though I'll treat this one. So no three. This guy by interest owing. So that means the other half needs to be what? Accounted for. Let's go to the next note. So four. Wow. So four means during the year, the be Limited sold an equity investment for 11 million. At the date of sale, it had a current value of 8.8 million. Wow. Good. So if you have a current value of 8.8 .8 million, that means probably there will be some profit on this folder because the proceeds is more than what? The current amount. Okay. And had originally cost 7 million. Fine. BKB Limited has recorded the disposal of the investment. Let's see. If it has recorded, it will reflect the trial balance. Let's go and check whether I can see the trial balance. So profit on sale of what? Investment. That's very good. This example is very good. It says it has been recorded, and I can see it here. Very fine. Go down. Come it by yourself. Now subtract 8.8 .8 from 11 million. That's about 2.2. Okay, let's see something here. Let's see something in here. The remaining equity investment, that is 26.5 million in a trial balance. So the one in the trial balance is a remaining fine. Have a fair value of 29 million at the date of or as at 30th September 2017. So it means that if if this fair value that they have here now there's not an increase in the fair value. So all what you have to do is ask yourself this is it fair value to profit and loss? Or a fair value to PNL so that the fair value gain we can record it accordingly. 
or we can pass the correct treatment. That is all. If it is held for sale, then the penalty gain should be reported in what the OCI. If it is held for trading, I normally call it for gambling or speculation, then it means that the fair value should hit the PL. That is all. Let's go down. Yes, they have to tell us. They have to tell us where we should treat the fair value. Good. The other reserve in the travel represent the next increase in the value of equity investment as a first October 2016. First of all, this thing. Let's go and check the other reserves. So other reserves. This is the other reserve. So other reserves here uh, meaning that uh, all the gains that they've had from these assets, that is where they've kept it. That is where they've kept it. So it means that if they've kept it here, then it means it's fair value through OCI. That is all. It's fair value to OCI. That perfect because if it has reflected in a PNL, we will not have it in other results. Yes, this one this is IFRS 9. You can revisit the video on IFRS 9 to get a full picture of this. This is a financial asset. Good. So, in short, don't need to worry. I'll try a summary for you. Being a limited, recoverable. Irrevocable decision at the initial recognition of this instrument to drive all changes in the fair value through other comprehensive income. That's perfect. Have you seen that our guess is very good? That this is true OCI. That is all. And the next transfer of rest profit from the other reserve to income surplus on disposal of the investment. Ignore the fair taxation on this transaction. So, in fact, this one is like a, a power on its own. So, let me summarize it for you. So, first thing that you have to do is the government profit and loss for, for us already. Fine. So, we need to look for the Fair value gain. So compare this 26.5 million to that of 29 million. Different. And this fair value gain transfer all add to the 5,000. Add to this 5,000 and transfer it to the income surplus. And that is all. So in summary, note four is like this. So let's summarize note four where to go. If you're able to do this for question, 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 as soon as you start the game, you are just passing the blue entry. Okay. So let's read note four. Summary for note four. First of all, report the profit on disposal. So item number one, the profit on disposal of 2,200 recorded on the trial balance. Can you send it to her other income? That's the first thing you have to do before you talk to anybody. Let that figure out the other income. Second, find the fair value gain at the end of the reporting period by comparing the 26.5 to that of 29. The figure, write it down. Again, Add it to the other reserve, so other reserve, which is 5,000. When you add, you get a total. This total figure, tell the examiner, it must be reversed. It must be reversed. How do you do that? Two and three. So the total figure. A total figure. This the five thousand. If I didn't reverse it one after the other, 
or even if I reversing it, you take it from the other reserves. So the other reserves should be collected. Take it from other reserve and add it to your income surplus. So add it to income surplus. That's all. So that's the reverse. So you subtract it from the other reserves. So other reserves you subtract and come and add it to income surplus. That is a reverse. So then the day, whatever answer you get, can you reverse it? Then we are done with the game. Okay. Let's see something in here. So that's the summary for the note four, step-by-step -step summary. Then you are done. Let's look at note five. How do you get the friends online? If you don't probably understand anything, you can let me know before we move on to note five. So that as soon as I'm down the note, what's the working it? We'll finish right now. Okay, what happened is the balance on the current tax, that's note five. Wow. The balance on the current tax represents the under over tax, uh, under over provision of tax liability for the year 2016. The directors have estimated the provision for income tax for the year and then the 30th September 2017. At what 6.2 million. As of 30 September 2017, the amount of being a beast limited net assets were 30 million in excess of it of the tax base. The income tax rate of being a beast limited is 30 percent. Now, here, if you go to tax issues, let us examine now. In summary, note five, summary of note five, then we are almost done. Summary of what note five. These summaries, if I actually have solved them in exams, it's not, you are not supposed to solve them at the first time. Just the last where to go. So, summary of note five C U D C O O R D. So, you just look for this, you guess, and then you are done. Current year tax under over and a provision for deferred tax for that of the note five. Current year they give us 16.2. If I was on the trial balance of sex for it, whether it's under or over. If you see current year tax on a trial balance, it represents under or over tax. If it's a debit side, it's under. If it's at the credit side, it's what over. Take note. Let's see. Let's go to the trial balance and see the current year tax when it's recorded. It's current year tax. It's a debit side. It means that it's what is an expense. And expenses are under. So debit means under tax provision and under you add. Under of 2.1 million. So 2.1 under. Then you look for the provision for the fair tax. I'll do all this in the workings. Let's go to the last footnote and we start a game. The last footnote and we start a game. Now, I like the last footnote. Non current assets. The freehold property has a land element of 13 million. The building element is being depreciated on straight line basis. The plant and equipment is depreciated at 40% per annum using the reducing balance method. Bigger bees. Run in a trial plant related to a product line that received bad publicity during the year, which led to a falling sales revenues. An impairment review was conducted on 1st April 2017, which concluded that. Based on estimated future sales. 
the brand had a value use of what? 12 million. And a remaining life of only three years. However, on the same date as the impairment review, the Capit Limited received an offer to purchase the brand for 15 million. So that is the fair value, less cost to sell. You compare that one to the recoverable, sorry, the value used to, to get a recoverable amount. And then you now get the current amount and you calculate for the impairment in a book. Let's continue. Prior to the impairment review, it was being depreciated using straight line method over a 10 year life. No depreciation or amortization has yet been charged on any non current charges for the year and the 30th September 2017. Depreciation, amortization, and impairment charges are all charged toward cost of sales, as we said that. Basically, that is it. Now, let me summarize note five. Note five is a bit, um, have a lot of like about three to four issues in there. Let's take our time and summarize it. Now, there's freehold property. The third property, I won't cover the depreciation, it's on straight line basis. Good. Now, if you go to the trial balance, the fuel property, you know, property is made up of land and building. So if we check fuel property, you can see 1st October 2017, the value is worth 63,000. Fine. So they are saying that the land element is worth 13 million. So that means the building is worth 63 minus what 13, and that will give us 50 million. So that's a land element. Don't forget that we don't depreciate land. We only depreciate building. So you have to take off the land element from the entire land and building before we can depreciate what the building. We don't depreciate freehold land. Take note, there are two types of land. The land, which is for the company, the company's own bona fide property. That is a freehold land. We don't depreciate freehold land. Why? Because it does not have a what? A useful life. Who will tell us the useful life of the land? No, forever. So I said that we do not have a definite useful life. We don't depreciate or we don't amortize them. Instead, it takes an impairment annually. So here, the land may not be depreciated. However, there are three types of land. Take note, we have what you call freehold land and leased hold land. These land are not the same. These are no depreciation. <laughs> this one, yes, we depreciate it. Because we've rented the land for just, let's say, five years. So that means you're going to use the land for how many? Five years. The land will produce economic benefits over five year period for you. So therefore, the cost needs to be spread over the five year period. Uh -huh. But here, the land will produce economic benefit for you forever. So here, you cannot probably spread the cost over forever years. No. So that is it. So take note of this. So let's summarize the note five and let's start again and finish it and move ahead. Okay, so what happened is this. In the note five, in summary, first item that you have to do is your upper depreciation on building. So depreciation on what? So building depreciation and the effect PP shadow. Number two, rate of depreciation on plants and equipment. So plants and equipment depreciation. Number three, you can have amortization for the intangible assets. Number four, calculate the impairment charge, if any. Impairment charge. Now, all these four items can be driven in cost of sales. They go to cost of sales, because you were told. That's number one, A. Number two, let them reflect in a non-current asset to be specific, the PPE shadow. 
let them reflect in a PP shadow. That is all. The PP shadow. So that is all. We are done. So if we're able to go through the question like this, you have to be fast. This you have to be fast. I've seen, I've not thought of it too. I just tell you where to go. So this one, you just use pencil, right? And here's the question. The building, the position, this. Small, 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 the question. Okay, increment. Okay, this. Then you'll be fast. So read the footnote two times. This is the first time. So this is the first time, an exam condition. So what I'm doing is I've already provided a table. So that one, I've scored myself six things already. If I'm doing all this. Okay, let's continue the game. This is step-by-step -step solution. Right after the footnotes, we are following the rats or the rats. So this one become rats. We are now with R and the A, like the T, the travel land. Let's go and scan to the travel land. Now do it me. I will scan the travel land. You should be able to tell me where each of the items in the travel land. Now let me tell you the good news. There's a good news. The good news is that um, in the travel land, if you count the items at 30, the standard giving you free 30 ticks on assumption. Three thirty ticks on assumption that you know where to go correctly. That's all. So if the item in the travel land are 30, you have free 30 ticks on assumption that you can correctly tell us where you have to treat them. So it's very important. So at the beginner level, we even solve a question where we are not going to touch anything in the footnote, only travel lands, empty travel lands. Just the travel lands, then we post where to be because if you can tell me where each of them will go and where the there was, it's quite a tick. So let's see, tell me. Let's do the travel lands. First, revenue. Revenue goes to the profit and loss, right? It's already the first item. Cost of sales, the same place. Distribution, the same place. Admin, operating expenses. Low note interest, finance costs, investment income, other income, profit on sale, other income, current year tax, that's a tax, profit and loss, PP, freehold property, freehold property, that is the PP shadow and on current asset, financial position, plan and equipment, the same place, brand, the same place. All the accumulated depreciation amortization in the same place. Investment in equity is a non-current asset. Inventory, current asset. Trade receivable, current asset. Bank. Oh, we check the bank. When you write bank like this, sometimes we put we push the balance to the credit side. That's a very dangerous position. That's current assets. Very good. If it's added. Credit side, that become no, sorry, current liability. That's bank overdraft. If you see bank, that's bank. And then just that amount is at the credit side. It's something that we do to work. Trade payable, current liability, other reserves. Sorry, other, other reserves, city capital, or stages in equity, or under equity. Retain and equity. And our reserves, equity, loan notes, that is non criminal ability. The first tax, we look at, we are just six more. Now, there's something in here that I want us to look at for. There was some balance in here or a date which. Okay. I think we are done. The following travel has to be a little bit faster. Okay, fine. The right after this, we are not going to accelerate. We are not going to consolidate. We are not going to like 
put these pieces together and prepare the financial statement. It will be very fast. Please, and please again. Can you open the two pages? Can you open the two pages? Yes, normally, under that condition, I saw these two at the same time. At the time I made profit of the tax, we are now on the balance sheet too. Yes, we did the two at the same time. But here I'll go by systematic order. Because of the space, I'll leave the balance sheet for now. Let's start revenue. Revenue. So revenue. Revenue, there was a footnote. There was a footnote to revenue. So let's go. So now this is the second time. This is the second time that we are going to read the footnote. We don't read the footnote like five times. No five times, only two times. What you've done, and then now you are going to solve it. So you are going to read it final. So I'm not going to read that footnote final. And that is all. Because limited revenue includes 16 million for goods sold to Kofi on 1st October 2016 on sale or retail basis. As of September 2017, records indicate that Kofi had sold 40% of the goods. Mm, that means we have 60% time. The goods were invoiced to Kofi at 12% margin. So quickly, let's take 60% of this figure from sales revenue and from receivable. That is all. That's the first thing that I'll do. So only open a bracket for revenue. I can go and do working somewhere and bring it back. I can start the working, so let me do that. Let me pass workings in. So workings number one is about sale or return. So either you sell the goods for us or you turn the goods back. So first item, that examiner, the sales value. So value of the remaining goods. So value of what remaining goods. Let's calculate it into that to be um 60% times 16,000. You are rating 3,000. So what would be the answer? 60% of this figure, any answer for us? Friends online, this is the time that I need your support with the calculation. 9,600, thank you, boss. So 9,600, basically. Then, third example now. This figure, first, you say subtract from sales revenue. Second, two, subtract from Trade receivable. So let's do it here. Revenue figure. Let's subtract this amount from it quickly. Yeah, be very fast. Because we've scanned through it already. So we're just putting them together. Since you've scanned through them already, we're just put, putting the pieces together. Good. Okay, let's see. The sales revenue happens to be what? 380,000. So we have to now less of 9,600 from it. So immediately, let me do it. Uh, 380,000 less, but if it's coming too small that you can't see, let me write it down. Eh? Open the bracket, 380,000. Less 9,600. Any answer for us? That's online. So 380 minus 9,600. So that should give us something like 370,400, right? 370,400 average. Perfect. What's your cost of sales? Your cost of sales. For cost of sales calculation, you cannot do it here. But here, eliminated the second aspect. So third examiner, cost of the goods, cost of these goods. What's the cost? Cost of the goods. 
Now, how do you get the cost of the goods? The cost of these goods, number one, calculate it, it to be, find the cost of this using the profit margin given to us in the question. Let's go to the question again. Now, the examiner is saying something in here that is so interesting. The examiner says something according to the one. It said that the goods were imposed in profit at what 12% margin. So if the profit loading is 12%, what was the cost? The cost represent was probably 88%, right? Perfect. This is margin. Margin is for sales. So margin through free and calculate it on the sales. By which you have markup, no, markup is on cost. That one you have to gross it up. Good. Or convert eight. Okay. So finally, the cost of the goods will be this 9,600 times what? 88%. Any answer? And now give us why 88? But the profit loading is not tough. Love it 88. So therefore, zero dot eight eight times nine thousand six hundred. That's give us eight four four eight. So the cost is eight four four eight. What's the entry? The cost is eight four four eight. What's the double entry? Eight four four eight. Double entry will be number one. Subtracted from where cost of sales. Number two, add it back to the inventory. Inventory needs to be added back because that's when they sell. But when they sold it, they took it from their inventory. And now we say it's not a sale. So therefore, inventory needs to be restored. So they add back to the inventory. Okay, so this one, we are going to work on cost of sales. For cost of sales, you need to work on it. We cannot. Uh, Perform the workings on the face like this. No, we can't do that. So let's go to the cost of tools calculation. In this particular question, is the one that probably posed a little ch challenge. So let's solve the cost of tools. Now, can we take off workings one? I'm going to clean workings one and then make workings two for cost of tools. So let's go to workings two for cost of tools. Going that. Gone. How we get it? Okay. So this is how we use it. So what is number two? That is I mean, cost of sales. So cost of sales calculation. Don't forget your three sales. Now the cost of sales will be the cost of sales working first. Check whether the travel and you're giving us cost of sales. Let's bring that one first. There's cost of sales here. 246,800. That is on a pair balance. Pair travel balance. So, so per trial balance 246,800. That is the cost of sales per trial balance. Agreed. Then we start adjusting this cost of sales. Any item which supposed not to be in, that they charge it in, we now reverse it. So when we are going through the footnotes, if we have scanned through the footnotes correctly, there were some, some of the footnotes that we stated we should add it to that of the cost of sales. So for instance, the cost of sales, bring them. Note one. Yes, note one. So this is a subtract from cost of sales. So third examiner. Sale or return basis. That gives us eight four four eight. Then the examiner, this is working is number one. That figure is coming from. We say we should subtract, right? 
we are subtracting it up you get a reason for its subtraction then again anywhere you mention cos of zero can lead to anywhere I don't know if you don't really mention cos of zero, no two. No, no, no. Uh, note four, no, we didn't mention cos of zero, note four. Note five, no, we didn't mention cos of zero. Note, note four, no, note five, yes, you mentioned it, non Kevin that's it. So here I'm going to come with the depreciations one after the other. And I'm going to come with the impairment and amortization one after the other. Impairment and amortization one after the other. Uh -huh. So take notes on this. Now here, look at how I'm going to look at it or solve it, even though the congested all in one or two parts. First, if you are going to cover the position and amortization, let me just give you the secret or the shortcut approach. So the shortcut approach. All what you have to do is this. All what you have to do is this. List all the assets that need to be depreciated or amortized or impaired. So right here, depreciation slash amortization. So right here, I am on depreciation slash what? Amortization. Okay, I will line it. I will list all the assets that need to be what, depreciated or amortized. I will list all of them. Had a question. I will list all the assets. Had a question. The asset that needs to be what amortized or depreciated, whether I can solve it or not, I'll them. Number one, from this question, let's go. So let's go to the trap and the assets are three here. Three hold property, plant and equipment, and brand. That's all. The only three and to be depreciated or amortized. But we come to know the property is made up of land and building, and we don't need three hold land. So therefore, we need to depreciate only the building. So yeah, instead of me recording property, I record what building. The rest are the equipment and equipment. So the first item on the list is what building. So that is that building. Next one is what plant and equipment. I have to leave some space here. Plants. And what equipment? The next one is what intangible brand. That is it. Now, when you do this, eh? Hmm. But this is the secret behind the. Now, out of this, some of them, you've like if mentioned it more than one in a footnote. Some of this. Some of them they do not mention it more than one, either once or they don't even mention it at all. Tell me those assets. Out of these three assets, they do not mention any of them. That's the easiest one. Plant and equipment, there's no issue against plant and equipment. They say it's on producing balance method, that's all. It is at 40% per annum using what producing balance method. There's no issue. Against it. So that's the first thing that I'll tackle. There's no issue with plant and water equipment. Because, see, I have to start from the easiest one. So even if I can do like easiest, easiest, like let's say four or five, I'm done. The rest, the examiner should add it in, in what? The marketing scheme. Don't forget that you are attempting the question, not producing marketing scheme and exam condition. Okay. So plant and equipment is the first thing I'll charge, even though I wrote it for a second. Doesn't matter. So reducing balance, that one, the decisions are what carrying amount. So go to the trial balance, okay, the cost. What's the cost here? 42,200. Check the accumulated depreciation plant. 19,700. 42,200 minus 19,700. Before you charge the 40% on it, you are done. So let's do it. Um, forty-two thousand two hundred 
minus 19,700. Friends online, what is the answer? Like 40%. That is the first item that I'll do because it's free. There's no other note affected. The mere fact that the entire paragraph looks clumsy or plenty does not mean that I cannot look through and, and fish out the easiest one and do it first. That's 9,000. I'll take that. I'll write it in, in the cost of sales. So 9,000 cents. OK. That side is not my friends online. Thank you. OK, so 9,000. Second, there are three of Let's go to building. Building to there was no information about building. Building to there's no information about building apart from the breakdown. Uh -huh. Building to there's no information apart from the breakdown. So I can tell building apart from the breakdown. That's on straight line basis, right? So this give us the issue life of the building. You have to tell us the issue life of what the building goes. The big element is which is the basis. That's all. Let's go to travel now. This is the the years over there. So, food property. The budget, the cost is. Uh, the cost is October 20. They bought it as of October 2017. That's a big this year. Okay, so we have 50. Let's see whether we have accumulated depreciation on building. Have you seen accumulated depreciation in here on building? Okay. You can see 1st October 2016. And uh, this is October 2017 to it must be 2016. They must move in line. Now this this 2016, if you do have the hard copy, it must be this 2017 should be 2016. Yeah, 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 it should be 2016. Perfect. If it's 2016, we are free to go. Now, tell me, this is just one year depreciation. If one year depreciation is equal to 8,000, and then the cost of the building, the building, the entire property is worth 63,000. Land is 13,000, so building will be worth 50,000. Perfect, building is 50. Now, if building is 50, what will be the issue life of building? Now, they've charged only one year depreciation and they had 8,000. They've charged what? Only one year depreciation is equal to 8,000. Then, what will be the issue life? Now, once they had 8,000 here, right? I can also, based on that fact, and put 8,000 in here without even worrying myself. So, perfectly correct. But for those who want to worry ourselves, let's worry ourselves, friend. Let's go ahead. Because if one year is on straight line and one year they are getting 8,000, then the same thing, me to this year, I must also get 8,000. Now, what shows that what they have there is one year? Let's go. We have here. There's a building from first of the thing up to thirty September. So as at the beginning, they have eight thousand there. So basically, I can determine the life of the of the building. That's how best you can determine the issue life of the building when not stated in a question. If not stated in a question, you just have to divide. 
So what's the gap? So that when I divide by 50, I'll get 8,000. So therefore, it should be 50,000 divided by what figure so that I can get what 8,000. That is for how many years? 6.25 years. So, so that is it. So those who are in trouble, it's now calculated. So it will be 50,000 now divided by 6.25 years. And now you get 8,000. You put it in. That is all. Uh -huh. So you get 8,000 and you place it in. I'm done with Jordan. At least now we are getting it. We start from easiest one and gradually. If there's a figure that you can't find it, oh, you calculate it, you're not getting it. Don't worry yourself. Just put the rate of work there and move on. Like this, brand. If I cannot do brand, I'll put 1935. Good. That's my date of birth. I'll put it there. I'm done. Because the date of birth is the nicest figure that you like ever. And it's a figure that you, you can never forget about it. Yeah. So take note, but here let's solve. So here our solve. In event if I have no idea that you have to do the rate of birth to fill in the gap. To leave it empty, it's an ISO. So provide the figure there. Good. Try the best figure. Now brand. Let's do on the brand. And take notes. The brand they tested for impairment, right? So let's calculate it as at the date. So from the start of the year up to the date of the impairment test. Now the impairment test was conducted on 1st April 2017. So now we have the financial year start from where? October 2016. So now calculate for me how many months from 1st October 2016 up to 1st of April 2017. How many months? Let's don't feel shy to count your fingers. After the exam, when you pass, nobody will probably inform me that you can't your fingers. Let's count. So October will be first, will be part, November, December, January, February, March. April will not be part, right? No, April will not be part. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six months. So we have to depreciate it for six months because of the impairment. So you come for first six months and second six months. So let's go, brand first six months. Then examiner, first six months. So first six months depreciation or amortization. So let's go and calculate it six months. Let's then pick the details. It's a part of the impairment review. It was based on straight line method for 10 years. Over a 10 year life. So let's go and pick the cost and the travel balance quickly. Cost and the travel balance, why you show yourself? Run, run, run. Okay, run is here. 30,000. So each life is worth 10 years. So 10 over 10 times 6 over 12. That is all. So that will give us something like. But 30,000 over 30,000 over 10 years times 6 out of 12. Let me, let me have your answer. That will give us 3,000. Half of 3,000 should be 1,005. So can you put in 1,005? Can you put in 1,005? Agreed. Can you put in thousand five? Now ah, we are done. We are done. But it was impairment. So let's be a covered impairment. So the next item is impairment. And they say impairment must be charged because of sales. So let's go and calculate impairment. I like this question. So let's go to impairment. So I'll, I'll put impairment here. They say we should charge impairment to what? Cost of sales. I'll talk about impairment here. The impairment workings. Where are you? So, impairment to be. So, that workings number two. So, workings number three. Are we here? Impairment. Impairment, we need to calculate the. First of all, we need a recoverable amount and we need the current amount. 
to the current amount of the assets at the date of impairment will be current amount. Don't forget your currency in three dollars. Okay. Someone have a question. Let's go and pick the question up. Now let me go over the brand. The brand is like this. We started the year. First October 2017. But it's done in first April. 20, but this one from 2016. First April 2017. There was impairment text. So this is impairment text. So that's why we have depreciated it for six months first to get up to the impairment. And now when we go to the impairment, we test for the impairment. Rather than we will cover it another depreciation again for another six months. That is it. So that's how the brand look like. The brand was impairment in the middle of the year. So you have to get amortization or depreciation before the impairment and after the impairment. Uh -huh. So that makes brand a little bit. Now you've got in the first one, 1,500. What you have to do is you have to suffer the current amount at the date of impairment. So over here, what the current amount is over here. That is what I want to look for now. How you get it. Okay, so great. Let's do something here. But this question, the issue was the cost of sales. You're able to get a cost of sales, correct? Impairment, you need two items. Impairment, you need current amount versus recoverable amount. That is all. That is impairment test. So the difference becomes the impairment test. So just fill in this. How do you get a current amount? Go to the, the footnotes. The impairment was conducted six months after the year or six months before the year ended. So that means you need to pick the cost of the brand. The brand, the cost is 30,000, right? Less all the accumulated depreciation at the date of the impairment test. Don't forget, I will need to subtract the accumulated depreciation on the trial balance. So let's go to the trial balance. The accumulated depreciation of the of amortization good accumulated amortization nine thousand. So this nine thousand plus the depreciation or the amortization that we have had, this open balance of amortization. So you need to add what we charge for the year to it, or we need to just subtract so the nine thousand plus the thousand five, right? So this one becomes the total amortization at the date of what the impairment test good. So therefore, this will be what 10,500. So take it from 30,000. So that will be 20,000. So that will give us 19,500. It is agreed. So that's the current amount of the impairment. Let's go and talk about the recoverable amount. You compare two items and let it higher. The value is used and the fair value less cost to sell and it's let it higher. So recoverable amount into bracket, bracket examiner higher. Let's go compare the value and select the higher value. Let's go to the footnote. The recoverable amount in here having to be. They are saying that, which concluded that based on Estimated future sales, the brand had a value ease of 12 million. Perfect. And made in life only what three years. Wow. And the remaining life of only three years. However, on the same date as the impairment review, being limited, the company. Receive an offer to purchase the brand for 15 million. That's a fair value less of sale. So the value is is what? Fair value less of sale is 15. So what's the recoverable amount in the bracket? The higher. So here you need to tell the examiner. Value used is 12. Uh, fair value less of the sale is what? 15. So in the bracket, the highest one is 15. So the Recoverable amount is 15,000. So therefore, 
when you find the difference, you get something like 4,500. So that is the impairment charge. So immediately, don't even rest. Put the impairment charge in. It's an expense. They told us that we should charge the cost of sales. That is all. Kindly copy the impairment calculation. I will clean it. This one, I will not clean it now. Only the impairment calculation. The recoverable amount is a higher of what value use and fair value less cost to sell. 15,000 is higher. Let us come and place the level one item, then we are done with the cost of sales. Let me pause here for questions, okay? I can copy this section now, take it off. Now, the next one is we now have to calculate the depreciation after impairment. Yeah, depreciation about impairment. Let's do something. You know, now we've impaired it, right? So let the depreciation from here to here, six months worth depreciation. Perfect. How do you get a six month depreciation? That one, you know. After impairment, the asset value becomes the recoverable amount. This impairment should be subtracted from the current value. You get what the 15,000. So after impairment, the asset value becomes what the recoverable amount because even if you pass the entry, you still get 15,000. First, expense is utility. Second, subtract this impairment from the current amount. What's the current amount? 19,500. If I subtract 4,500, from 19,500, I'll still get my 15,000. So therefore, after, in fact, there's a statement that goes like this. After impairment, the asset value should not be more than what, or fall below the recoverable amount, or zero. So you can't have a negative current amount. That is what we are talking about here. Uh -huh. Okay, so let me take this section off and have the depreciation after impairment, the six months. So depreciation, in fact, impairment is just one day. Old. So you can't realize that you should subtract the impairment period from it. Impairment is just one day. So after one day, now you can continue again. You have your full six months. Impairment is just one day job. So do not take any month from our depreciation calculation. So let's take note. So the next six months. So I'm continuing. I'm continuing from this space, but I don't have space, so let me continue from here. I'll call it second depreciation. The so second six months of depreciation or depreciation, but that's amortization, second six months amortization. Or you can call it amortization after impairment. Let's do something here. Open the bracket. It is 15,000. Now, the examiner told us something in the question that I like it. The examiner was moving us between dates and years. He said something very interesting. It goes like this. And remaining life of only three years. So, the asset remaining life after the impairment is what? Three years. Not the year that we used. Thank you. So the asset life becomes what three. So therefore, fifteen thousand divided by what three years. Close it times six out of what twelve. Why six out of twelve? Because from where we are now to the end of the year is six months. Don't forget. So fifteen thousand divided by three. That is five thousand. Half of five thousand should give us two thousand five hundred. That is all. 2500 We are done with the cost of sales. Finally, add the cost of sales together for me, starting from here up to here. Total, taken to the PNL. That is all. This question it was the cost of sales that posed challenge. So, can you let me have total when we are done? So, finally, we get something like. 263852. 263852. Now, when you go to the financial position, the balance sheet, if you want to look for the current value of intangible, that examiner is a 15,000 less 2,500. That is all, 2,500. No 
this year again, you put it in, but then that's 12,000 for my family. We are down the cost of sales. So I'll now go in and put it in my statement. I'll tell them now, working number two is the cost of sales. 263-852. Open a bracket like this. Then what to be the game. Okay, so let's go in for the most part of it. I'm about to clean the working for cost of sales. So if you have not already put some few points together, can we try that? Let me start from here. Okay, let's see something. Now for me, go to gross profit. This was the gross profit in the that we are done. So gross profit. Gross profit happen to be uh one hundred and six thousand five four eight. What again? This question admit and distribution they are so straightforward, no issue affecting them, so we can go straight. I mean, can go to distribution. This question, there's no issues affecting admin and distribution. No, we will just matter so we can easily market it, right? So let's go. If there are more issues, I'll just put them together. I don't know. The more issues, I'll put them together. I need to be flexible enough. The only issue I mean, Distribution, most of the distribution does not carry any footnotes. Wow, that's good news. Distribution, most of it does not carry any footnotes. Is admin that way? So this is said that you have to separate from what? Admin expenses because equity dividend is not an operating activity. It's not an operating item. So it's not, it shouldn't hit our PNR at all. Let's go in. Distribution happened to be 17,400. And admin is 50,500. So 17,400 for distribution. 17,400. Admin, open a bracket, it's 5,500 less than 12,000. Good. So you get something like 38,500. That's 8,000. 500. Can you put them in brackets? We are subtracting. And finance will be. So it's operating profit. So that's right here, operating profit. And as soon as you get operating profit correct, in fact, you're about to finish. Our operating profit happen to be. And from there, your other income flows. So other income. So five zero six four eight. Ah, uh, fifty thousand six four eight. So fifty thousand six four eight. So other income. So what is number three? Other income. Let's go do the other income. Confirmed. Okay, great. Let's go, other income, third examiner. Mr. Examiner, this work is going for other income. Let's come through the trial balance where I can see any other income. This other income, they even easily do it on the face, adding them because they are so straightforward. And then they didn't assemble them to the same place for us, 1,300. And then this one, 2,200. That's all. That's the other income. That's the other income. So the other income will be investment income of 1,300. Don't forget your currency. And then profit 
on disposal. And that will be 2,200. If I put all together, she give me 2,500. So I don't think I'm working number three. This will refer the examiner. So 2,500, I'll add. Now adding this, I get one four eight, and I get three five. So we got this some profit before interest and what tax, no shortcut. So it's three thousand five hundred, right? So sorry, so sorry, so sorry, three thousand five hundred. Here should be fifty four. So 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 three thousand five hundred. Okay, so that is that. What next? Um, fifty-four thousand one four eight. Then equal to interest, finance cost. Interest open bracket. We can do it straightforward on the face. We can do the interest straightforward on the face. Let's quickly come the interest. Can it be written some few points down? Interest ten percent to the five percent on this figure. Straightforward, eighty thousand four four zero ten ten percent. So the interest calculated like this by the examiner eighteen thousand four four zero times ten percent, and let's give a thousand eight four four. Good. We take it off. You get a profit before tax. Profit before. Before tax. And that one should be 52,264. 52,264. Then uh, we go to tax, taxation. Or income tax expense. Uh, that side is not coming clear. So income tax expense. So income tax expense. Income tax expense. Working number four. Let's go. Income tax expense. Working four. Workings number four, income tax expense. Workings four, income tax expense. Income tax alone, you need only two workings. A typical income tax calculation, the two. So it will be workings four and five. So let's see, workings number four, I'm doing the income tax expense. What will go to PL? Write your C, leave a space and write a D. For this question, we said we have under, so let's write it. Under tax provision. This deferred tax. Deferred tax. This is a current year tax provision. Current tax. Don't forget your three zeros. So let's see. Now, what's the current year tax? Let's go to the footnote. I'm getting uh, 52,304. Mm. Let's check the profit again. Okay, 52,304. 52, 52, Thank you. I take that. Okay, let's quickly uh, be going there. Let's go to the footnotes, but okay, let's go to the footnotes and these issues. I think it's uh, we, we add it as a note um, five. Hmm, note six or uh, six note two. Yeah, I need six note four. Okay, note five. Balance on current tax is the under over tax. Of the tax liability for the year ended 30th September 2016. Let's go the balance by you. current tax. If it's current tax on the travel, it's present under over. At the debit, it's an under, so under tax of 2100. Let me put 2100 here. 
have you seen 2100 under tax I go again I think I continue to say that the footnote okay, they are saying that the director of estimated provision for income tax for the year and the third of September this is the current year we are reporting what the third of September so that's the current year 16,200 that's it so we're going to put it in the current year tax in fact CUD current year under or over and what deferred tax so the current year is six 16,200. 11 deferred tax over now. I mentioned that the, the tax issue of tax you need two workings. You need additional working for deferred tax purposes. So create another workings again. Workings number five. That one is about deferred tax. Deferred tax alone cost for a different workings. Before we can arrive at the figure here, we to do another workings. Child examiner, open balance. Don't forget your currency. This one, don't forget the currency. Leave a space and write a closing balance here. That is all. The movement. We are done. So let's do something in here. How do you get open balance it's on the trial balance? Most of it, in fact, most of it is the last footnote. I don't understand why. It's the last footnote, most often. Last footnote. The fair tax is the open balance. 5,400. Agreed. Perfect. Let's go. So, open balance is 5,400. Let me put it here. How do we get it? 5,400. Then I will leave a space. I don't write anything here. Come and do the closing balance. Closing balance, open a bracket. Here they have to give you the temporal difference. They have to give you the temporal difference, the current amount of the net asset and their tax base. So that we can find the difference. And the difference represents what? The temporal difference. Then you multiply by the tax rate currently enacted or subsequently enacted. The current tax rate or the subsequent one let's see in fact i'll give you a shortcut if you go the figures are to find a difference and multiply by the tax rate if you go to only one just pick it and multiply by the tax rate they've done the calculation already for you don't even worry yourself it says something here at 30th of 2017 the current amount of previous limited net assets were 13 million in excess so the current amount were more than their tax base. So tax base is 13. So that means the temporal difference is 13. And this is what taxable. Taxable temporal difference because the current amount is in excess, the current amount is more. And that is an uncurrent liability. It's a great what you call deferred tax liability, which is an uncurrent liability. Perfect. So in short, it will be the 13,000 times 30%. So if my calculator would be correct, it should be 3,900, right? If my calculator would be correct, 3,900, perfect. I have a nice question for you. Now, if the open balance is 5,400, but the closing balance is 3,900, what should I add? To 5,400, so that I can get towards the closing balance. Third examiner, it must go into the income tax calculation or the PL. Um, mm, I should add 1,005 to it then. So, what should I add to this 5,400 so that I can get towards 3,900? Should I want to add 1,000? 400 to which I should subtract it. Uh -huh, like that. I have to less 1,500 before you can get what this that is all. Please, that is that this figure goes to the balance sheet at what non current liability. This figure goes to here. Come and put it here. Whatever figure, that's the one I'm going to put there. So, that is that 
uh, as it is here, carry it. Don't change it to, don't change the sign on 1005, just subtract as it is here. Come and put it in nicely like that. Okay. Now, total all this, that's what I'm going to do here now. Let's total all. So 16,200, 2,100, and 1,005 less. And then this one goes to the six, goes to the current liability. This is a current liability, that is all. So this is all about what income tax. The current year tax goes there as current liability. This one goes to PNL as the income tax expense, 16,800. 16,800. 16,800. So this one goes to be as income tax expense on care liability. The rest does not go anywhere. That's all. That's their end. The income tax expense, I need to just um, put 16,800 in here. I'll subtract, then I'll get a profit after tax. What do you get for the profit after tax? For profit after tax. So that is all. Can you copy the tax section? I'm coming there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming there. I'm coming toward this direction to complete the game. Or oh, can we clean the top? Get the top, we are done with it, right? So let me clean this. 35,504, okay? I'll take that. Correct, okay. So let me clean this section, because we are done with this section. And then continue. Now, I'll call it anti-part, profit after tax, like continuation. There's no space here. That's not continuing here. You have a figure like, if you guys in here, 35,504. 35,504. What again? OCI, other comprehensive income, and line it nicely. Like this. And line it nicely like this. What is the OCI? The other comprehensive income. The other comprehensive income. The other comprehensive income. Let's go and calculate the other comprehensive income. This other comprehensive income, what I are going to calculate this? For this particular question, you can have an alternative fashion. So, other comprehensive income, OCI. Let's go. It's about the sale of the investment. Now, the main investment, they had a revaluation. So the main investment, why are you show yourself? Uh -huh, yes, yeah. Now, first of all, you to get the remaining equity investment. So can you find a difference between the remaining investments? Let's start the whole game. During the year, you can be in the for 11 million. At the date of sale, it had a current value of 8.8 million. Okay. And Originally cost seven million. So originally, the amount was seven million. Okay, meaning that finally between eleven million, uh, between the current value that's eight point eight and seven million, that is one point eight million. Good. That is the fair value gain so far. Okay. So if The remaining equity investments, which is 26.5 million in a trial balance, have a fair value of 29 million. So first of all, let's do something here. The remaining, so fair value gain. So let me calculate this one. Let's calculate somewhere. Working is number six. Fair value gain on the financial asset or on the investment. First of all, start like this. Fair value gain on the remaining assets. Remaining assets. 
On the remaining assets, open your brackets. The closing balance is 29,000, less 26,500. What do you get? Okay. So 29,000. Uh, 29,000. I'll finish right now. 2,500. Okay, I'll take that. I have to give out 2,500. Okay. Again, let's do something in here. So the remaining one, the fair value of this. Okay, so the transfer on the remaining one, I uh, will transfer it. And what we have to do is this. We need to get ready here, we can be sold on the equity. So on the disposed one, the disposed one will be, now, if you check the, if you check originally, the current value is 8.8. Originally, the cost is 7. So there was a fair value gain. Yes, there was a fair value of 7 million inclusive to 8.8. So therefore, 1.8, right? So on the disposed one, so let me write disposed. So disposed one, that one, the current value happened to be. Or you can just uh, do the calculation like this into bracket 8,800 less 7,000. So that will give us 1,008, right? Okay. That would be 1,008. Oh, it's 2,700. I think uh, it should be 1,008. Uh, please, which one is 2700? Uh, it's 2700 there. Okay, 2700. Okay. Uh, well. Okay, so this one is 2,700. Okay. Looking for this one. Any answer for us? This one, 29,000 minus 26,500. What do we get? Now this fair value gain calculation, we have to move it from the beginning up to now. So what we have to do is this. The actual gain should be calculated on the 11,000. If you want to get a fair value, correct. Now there's an alternative, alternative uh, treatment. There is an alternative treatment. I think all of them should give out the same answer. Yes. What we use is the alternative. There's the main treatment on the investment, the financial instrument. I will provide the alternative treatment for you. Any of them should give us the correct answer. Any of them should give us the correct answer. Let's see how best we can look at it. So if we should go by that approach, let me see if I can provide all for you. Let me see if I can provide all for you, the alternative treatment. Even though we have also treated it in here. So alternative treatment, you know. 
Uh, on the date of sale, what happened is this the alternative treatment? Alternative treatment. First, we will calculate the fair value gain. We will calculate the profit that need to be realized or the profit that need to be transferred. We can have the profit that need to be transferred. Profits need to be transferred. Need to be transferred. In that case, the other income, we are not going to reflect the 2,200 in other income. That is the alternative treatment. So let's take note of the alternative treatment. Okay. So what happened is this first profit we transfer, it should be the proceeds 11,000 less the cost, the actual cost, the original cost, which is 7,000, right? So that will give us 4,000. So on that note, we have to transfer 4,000 into the realized profit. All the rest. So this is the profits that need to be transferred. In that case, if you use the alternative, I think I might do that one. In that case, what happened is this. The OCI will be like this, the OCI. First of all, we need to record the, the gain on the remaining assets, so the gain. Gain on gain on the remaining. The gain on the remaining is two thousand five hundred. Okay. Then we can also calculate the gain on disposal. Gain on disposal. So gain on disposal. In fact, if you go by this approach, it's also balanced. But I like the alternative approach than this. So let's go in for this. Get on disposal. Then that one, uh, it should be open the brackets and then can we find the difference between how much it was sold and the current amount? In fact, the gain on disposal was 2,200. This gain needs to be what? Sent to the OCI. So this is the total OCI. Uh, making 4,700. I like this alternative. In this case, no other income. In this case, no other income. That is all. So the other income figure needs to be released. That is this situation. Uh -huh, that is this situation. Although, I like this situation. This one prevents, like, present something straightforward. Okay, so basically that is that. So that is the alternative. I think I'm going for the alternative. In this situation, we had a 2,500 here. We've already recorded 2,200 in. Now, let's add something here. It means that the OCI here, we can get something like uh, 4,300. Good. Now I've already recorded 2,200 in the financial statements. Good. So basically that is that. So since I'm going for this approach, since I'm going for this approach, I have to make just one um, correction. Because uh, this approach can alternate to two. This is a method one and a method two. How to find the OCI, basically. Good. So I'm going for this. If I'm going for this, no other income. The figure that should hit other income should be this figure. And now I will transfer it on the face. Good. But if I'm going for this approach, we have 
calculated a two thousand two hundred gain in there. Okay. So we have calculated again in there. So take notes. This approach, ah, uh, we need to do a lot of adjustments. So let's go by the simplest approach and, and let us be fine. So it means that the other income, the 2,200 that will be added to the other income need to be released because we are sending to the OCI. You should rather reflect the OCI, that is all. So what is the other income? Let me release um, 2,200 from it. So kindly release 2,200 from the other income. At the end of the day, um, this profit the tax should go down by 2,200. So this one be um, 33, 33, 3. So that should give us uh, 3, 3, right? So 33,304. In fact, the final OCI figure will not be will not change. Okay. So finally, we have other comprehensive income coming from two sources. So OCI. Uh, this is fair value gain on the investment. Work is number 36. So just that we are picking this as a working six is the alternative. So working is number six. I hope you get it very well. So working number six should probably give us 4,700 as the fair value gain. So I don't really put in everything together. The 2,200 fair value gain, in fact, is the one that they gave it to us in the question. The 2,200 is nothing by the, the 11,000, they sold it for 11,000 minus that of the 8,800, right? That should give us this 2,200. But because it was stated in your question already, that is why I did not provide any workings. I didn't provide any workings because it was stated in the question. And that was how they arrived at it. How to get it. Okay. So I hope everyone is fine. So that means in the short case, we are done with the fair value adjustments. Our alternative approach could also work for us perfectly. So in short, in a new financial statement, the fair value that we need to probably pick, it should be the 29,000. So all what we have to do is this. We need to get a total comprehensive income. So total comprehensive income will be uh, the profit after tax will be affected because this 2,200, don't forget that the 2,200, the other income section, let me do the computation, other income. The other income we had one investment income of 1300. Then we added profit on uh, disposal of 2200. And we said that now we are going by the alternative treatment where this profit has been treated here. This is a profit that's treated here. So now it will form part of the game. The form part of the game. In fact, we could have continued this approach, could have given us the same answer. So it means that the other income in this era should be only 1,300. So that means 
the figure, the 35,000, 504 that we have, we need to subtract what the 2,200 from it. That is all. Uh -huh. So that is what we must probably look at for. Okay, so let's put them together. In fact, if you do have that figure there, you just need to add only 2,500 to it to give you the same answer as that one. Yeah, that's the alternative. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's add them together and let's see something here. Okay, so putting these two figures together, I get something like uh, 30, 35. Okay, so please, what do you get? What the total compressive income? 4,700. That should be 38,004, agreed. So it will be 38,004. We are done. 38,004. Now I'm done with the that of profit or loss. We are now with the profit and loss. Now let's go straight to the financial position and then let's play it off quickly. And then let's move on. Let's play it off and let's move. This alternative approach, like the one that we maintain the 35,000, the one that we did first. In that scenario, the gain, the gain that we are going to transfer will be one. That of the gain on the sale, the total gain on the sale. So now we move it from from the cost, like the only gain that we are going to transfer in that scenario will be this, we will transfer the gain on the sale. So that one will transfer a gain of, let's say, let's uh, start from cost of seven up to now we have 8.8 .8. so therefore there's a gain of 1800 or so yeah so in that case we will transfer only 1800 yes we will transfer only 1800 from the oci and plus give us the same answer uh -huh. so we will transfer that figure in that scenario if you should go by the first approach okay if we have to go by the first approach. How do we get the friends online? Now let's go to the financial position. Let's uh, finish that. The so financial position, I'm doing it here. Any work in this report, I come and then do it for them. Any work in this, we have to post and then come and then do it. Okay, so what happened is this. First of all, we need to write down our current, land, our current assets. That's for the assets. Let's go up a bit. So start with the non current assets. That is one. The heading is there already, right? Let me go up for you to see the heading. We wrote it at the reception of the class in capacity of financial position. So let's start with non current assets. Non current assets. And the line is first of all, write your PP workings number for the last working six to so working seven. Where should your working? So let me clean somewhere and put a PP in there. Let me put a PP in there. 
Let me put a PP in there. So let's put a PP in. So PP is a working number seven. So PP. Now this PP, I can just perform slight workings. So it's not like this. Uh, put the figure here in thousands. They're not active to do PPE shadow. So don't do comprehensive PPE shadow. Just do the smart way, just a short PPE shadow. First, what do you do? That type of examiner. First answer on the list is property. So freehold property. Open the brackets. Pay the cost. Then the cost of the assets. The cost is what? Let's see the cost of the assets from the trial balance. So the cost of the three uh, for the 63. And the unrated position is um, building is 8,000. So 63,000 like this. Less in the bracket. Add the two figures together. The 8,000 plus the depreciation charge in the cost of sales. What the depreciation charge in the cost of sales it was also 8,000. Add the two together. So 16,000 minus 63. You get something like. So 63 minus 16. Any other for us? Uh, 16,000. The 63 minus 16,000. How do we get it? Very well. Let it come, come. Okay, what do you get? Okay, 63 minus 13. No, you only the 63,000 land is for 13,000, building is for what? 50,000. Now, if you get for 50,000, you only need to break them between land and building. If you are going to calculate depreciation after depreciation, that's it, just one land and building, they are one. It is only when I want to calculate for depreciation that you need to separate them. So, here we don't need to separate them, it should be one. So, put the total. 63,000 at all the depreciation. The one in the trap balance plus the one that is calculated. That is all. The one in the trap balance plus the one is calculated. This is what you get the carrying amount. This is the simplest carrying amount that we can calculate for the examiner. If it was not asked, any ask for degree share. So 63 less 16. Any answer? So 63 less 16. That is 47,000, so 47,000. The next asset on the list, plant and then equipment, plants. So plant to the same thing. So plant to the same thing, so plant and equipment. And open the bracket. The cost happen to be what? So let's go to that. Um, so the cost is 42,200. And then the accumulated is 19,700. Plus the 9,000 that we had. So here it will be 42,200 minus the bracket 19,700. Plus the 9,000 cost of sales. This 9,000 is in the cost of sales. The 9,000 is in the cost of sales. So what do we get? So 42,200. Uh, 42,200 less 19,700 less um, 9,000. That should be 13,500. 
So handles we are down the PP in the PP. Intangible is not part, it's on its own. If you put this together, you get something like 50, so 60,000 and what 500, yeah, total. So I'll come in here and put 60,500 here as PP. I'll go to intangible. Intangible asset. I open a bracket. That one I wrote it down when I was solving it. The 50,000 less was the 2,500. Agreed. And that will give us 12,500. Then write investment. Investment, you write 29,000 in here for an investment. You sum all up. Sum all up. Uh, you get a your non current assets. So let's sum all up to get non current assets. So uh, 6,500, 12,500, 29,000. That should give us something like. Any answer, rent online. 1,000, so 1,000. You got your current assets. For the current asset, we start from inventory. Inventory, open the bracket and add the costs. Can we add the costs? The cost of the uh, sale and return goes to it. So, inventory, where are you? Inventory should be on the draw balance. So the inventory is here. Thirty-eight thousand, right? Plus the costs. So thirty-eight thousand plus the cost of. I think the cost we have something like eight thousand four four. It confirmed for me. The cost of the steel or return basis. Uh huh. So 38 plus 8448, what do you get? So that should give us 46,000. Uh, 46,448, right? Okay. Then come to trade receivable. That one, you don't forget to subtract. The 9,600, that is the sales value for that of the sales value. Show the sales value why you show yourself. Show the sales value is 44,000 plus the 9,600, that is the they still return. So 44,500 plus 9,000 uh, uh, less 9,600. So what do you get? So what do you get? Friends online. We are getting to the stream and we'll finish soon. So you get something like So 34,900. So 34,900. Then we add a bank balance to it. So what's the bank balance? The bank balance is uh, 8,000. The bank balance is 8,000. Bank balance is 8,000. So let's see something in here. Wow. So bank balance. That 
that is 8000 put the 8000 for the total current assets and finally we'll get a total assets so from there you get your total assets okay your total assets 89348. Okay, so 191,348. the equity we need to prepare the statement of changes in equity that one i'll do it out for you to prepare i'll do the statement of change in equity for you to prepare without the total capital or the ordinary shares this is the one they have for us uh ordinary shares is here yeah. 52,000 ordinary shares 52,000 so let's start all these shares. 52,000. Perfect. The next one is retained earnings. Now, retained earnings are going to do working. The working number, let's say, is seven. Oh, okay. If the last working, continue the number. So retained earnings will be open balance. Open balance that is on the traders. What is the open balance for the retained earnings? Let's get paid from the person. Retain earnings open balance. Okay, we change them, right? That's 26,060. Retain earnings is 26,060. So twenty six thousand and sixty. So there should be some of my twenty six thousand and sixty. You add a profit after that to its anti part. We have thirty eight thousand and zero zero four. Thirty eight and zero zero four. Good. Then Less the dividend, less dividend, the equity dividend, which is 4,000. Finally, add the transfer, transfer from the other reserve, which is, uh, we transferred something like, we transferred something like, We transferred, sorry, this side is not coming. Uh, uh -huh. She go back a little. So we said I'm going to transfer an amount of 4,000. They realized, so the amount realized. 
we are transferring 4,000. Dividend need to be subtracted. That is all. If you put all this together, what's the closing balance of the retained earnings? So 26,060, 38,004. Putting all this together, what do we get? This transfer is the 4,000 that we calculated. Mm -hmm. What do we get? Friends online. Okay. 56,064. So 56,064. Okay, so that will be here as retained earnings. Well, case number maybe seven, right? She be already there. So 56,064. Let's continue the game. Let's finish hard. Let us continue. I'm going to clear this section so kindly. Uh, copy that section. I've not done that. Let's put other reserve. Other reserves. In other reserve to let me perform the workings of the other reserve here. Workings number eight. Other reserve workings number eight. Other reserve workings number eight. So workings number eight. Other reserve. I want open balance. It's 4,000. Uh, balance is 5,000 from the question. Let's go and pick it together. I like that thing. Picking figures nowhere. Open balance for other reserves. Other reserve value is 5,000. Perfect. So other reserve is 5,000. Open balance. And there's OCI, the revaluation gain will go there. So the revaluation gain that we had, we had 4,700. Transfer to the retained earnings, we transfer 4,000. The recipient company you add, or the recipient account you add, the one that you are giving out is subtract. But on the day, you get a closing balance of 5,700. Take into workings number eight, so 5,700. That is all for equity. We are done for equity. Let's go and end the game at the liability. Can you add all the equity together? Okay. So this will be the closing balance. So sorry. So this will be the closing balance. The transfer, the evaluation gain, the it from it. So can you give me the total? In fact, I've done it already. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. I will give it on the Or it's if I the total. So sorry. Let's go to the liability. Liability, I'll start from non-current liability. Non care liability should be set up for the debt, the loan notes. 10% loan notes. The figure is 18,440. The next one is deferred tax. Deferred tax, the closing balance we had, uh, we had 3,900. That is all for non-current liability. Let's go to current liability. Current liability. That one there, all right. Current liability. Can you get me the total? 11,000. Mm. Okay, so 113,764. 113,764. Then, uh, care liability payables. So, first trade payables. 
repairables. Then, then okay, I'll need you to, I need a daughter. Can you do that for me? Let them the trade payable. The trade payable is 42,900. 42,900. 42,900. So, 42,900. And the interest owing. So, interest owing. The interest, 22,34, right? Twenty-two thousand three four zero interest owing. We have you open a bracket. The one eight eight four minus thousand, so to be eight eight four. In fact, let me this way. Get me the total liability. So total liability. Let's sum all this one together. The total liability. So total liability will be and finally, let's go down again. Now, get me total equity and liability. So, total equity and liability. Uh -huh. The interest figure we have to show workings. The interest, the workings is this. Let me do the interest working. Drag it. It is thousand four four like this. Minus the thousand that is paid, and that give us eight eight four. Good, and that give us that particular. Okay, so there must be a current year tax. Now the current year tax, is it 16,700 or 16,200? Let's go and pick it. The tax is 16,200. Good. So current year tax should be part of the current liability. And that give us so first of all, so let's find the total liability before we find the total equity and then uh, liability. So fifty nine 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 four. Ah, no, I not agree. Ah. Uh -huh. No, the provision is not part. Only the current that we send to the financial position. The under the under provision is not part. So only the current year tax provision. Good. The under or the over is not part. Okay, that means you are adding only the current. Uh, I want everything. The non-current plus the current. There's some. Um, okay, eighty-two thousand. So we have eighty-two thousand three two four. Okay, and then let's go to the next period and we call the total equity and liabilities. So what is the total equity and liabilities? Let me do it here. Total equities and liability. So add this figure to this and let's see the game. Let's add it to and let's see the game. And that is the end of the game. So total the next line. I know yes, as just as one right here. 
Total equity and liabilities. So total equity and liabilities. Total equity and liabilities. So total equity and liabilities. Okay, so let's see the game. Okay, great. Let's go back to recalculate the retained earnings again. So let me revisit the workings. So retained earnings workings. That is an open balance. Don't forget to three zeros. The open balance is going to be 26,060. After profit and that has to be the correct profit. We have 333034. Good. Then um it less the dividend, less dividend. Twelve thousand cities. It then happen to be twelve thousand cities. So let's see something in here. So dividend is twelve thousand cities. We are lesson. Then next, just add a transfer. Transfer. In fact, we did the same thing by the calculation, but uh, the summation of this, let's recast this figures again so that we balance it off and then get out of it. So 26060 plus 33, three, and that's 304, less 1, 2, 3, plus 4,000, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, so 51,364 is not the same as the 56 and 64. So kindly check the calculations again. Yeah, but, uh, let's see something in here. 51,364. If you can't, you won't get the old figure. So let's go and put it in here. Don't forget the working number, the working number. There's something in here. Okay, working number is the very terminal. It's 51,364. Then our other reserves, other reserves. With the other reserves, we probably will be having quite calculated it. So currently, um, get an open balance, which is 5,000 plus 4,700 less a transfer. Uh, get something like 5,700. That's it. Can you take note of this? I'm about to take it off if I'm done calculating this. So let's start the calculation 52,000. Let's get a total equity. We are just recasting the figures again. The type of um, 52, 1, 2, 3, plus 51, 3, 6, 4, plus 5,700, plus 109 and 64. So 109 and 64. Uh, 109 and 64. So good. So now let me take the equity from there. So we take any any copy that is has not done this. Let me go back. Do I get it correct? So on line it, go to your non current ability. Uh long term ability, we have two items in there. Ten percent low notes. Loan notes. That loan note, we have something like um, at least eighteen thousand four point zero. Then we have the fair tax. So the fair tax we have three thousand nine hundred. So when you put the two together, so eighteen thousand. 18,000 uh, 440 
plus 3,900. That's 52,340. 340. So, one Linux. Counting current liability. Current liability. We are doing everything again. Current liabilities. For the current liabilities, we have three payable. Trade. No note after it. Trade payable. Great. So basically, it's 42,900. That is uh, let packet illustration where we are picking for forty two thousand nine hundred. From there we come to interest owing. This time around I will show the workings in here. It should be thousand eight four four minus thousand that is eight. So they are owing interest of um Eight four four. Okay. Then the second, the current tax. So current tax, which we have sixteen thousand two hundred. Yeah, yes, it's in the footnote. Now, what we have to do with this? Uh, let's sum all the okay liability together. So let's sum that. So twenty two thousand three forty plus forty two nine hundred plus is eight four four plus sixteen thousand two hundred. That should give us eighty two thousand two eight four. So eighty two thousand two eight four, and that is the total. Total liabilities. Okay. Now let's quickly put um, the total equity plus the total liability together. When we do that, we get something like um, okay, so this answer just plus this so answer plus one zero nine zero six four. Perfect. So one nine one three four eight double underline it and call it total equity and liability total equity and liability so it must balance with this so basically that is how we are going to prepare a financial statement there are a lot of questions we need to solve so can you go through this if there's any issue can let me know let me have it and take your time and go through it step by step as you have provided a solution okay so now that will be my end if you do have any questions can you ask there's no questions we move on don't forget to subscribe and also share the video to your friends yes you can also support us in all material respects to build this um, free videos, free lecture videos uh, to be in tower. OK, so on that note, I will end here. Have a nice day. I will see you again in the next lecture. Please, please again, take your time and go through and balance it for us. Thank you very much for coming. And kindly subscribe if you have not done that. Have a nice evening. Goodbye, everyone.